Hi folks, I'm Commander Addy Dane and this is a brand new series using Elite Dangerous to view the sky at night. This is where real life is going to cross over into Elite Dangerous the video game where you can look up at the night sky at a star and say I've been there. Now you might not know this but the galaxy in the Elite Dangerous is actually a simulation of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. It's got 400 billion stars and it's based on real science fact. I thought it would be a great idea to be able to look up at the sky, see the stars that we can see on Earth and the constellations and check them out in Elite Dangerous. Be able to fly there and say, I've been there. In this episode we're going to be looking at probably one of the most famous constellations in the Northern Hemisphere and that is the Plough but some of you may recognize it as the Big Dipper or maybe just a saucepan but its real name is Ursa Major which translated basically means Great Bear. So I'm using an application here called Stellarium which is absolutely free and you can download it. It's a planetarium which shows you the stars, the constellations of planets and all that kind of thing in the night sky and you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it. You can zoom in and out and move it around but for the moment we're just going to take a look at the plough. Now if you can't see it we, we'll be able to switch on the constellation lines and straight away you'll notice that Ursa Major isn't just those seven stars in fact it's a load more stars which make up uh, the Great Bear. Now can you see a Great Bear because I can't so let's turn on some artwork and now you can definitely see that there's a bear in the sky somewhere. I'm not actually convinced myself, but um, but anyway, let's turn that off. Before we start talking about the plough, I just want to mention one other star, and that is the North Star, or Polaris is its real name, or the North Pole Star, whatever you like to call it. Now, a lot of people think that the Polaris is a very bright star, brightest star in the sky, but it's not true. It's quite dim actually. Uh, you can easily find it using the plough. Uh, so here's the handle of course and if these two stars here, these are called the pointer stars not pointer sisters but pointer stars and if you draw a line straight through them and uh, keep going and going and going you eventually come to a star and this is Polaris. Okay so here we have the plough but before I go through these stars I just want to highlight a couple of things. So there's this pixel here and there's this one here moving slowly across the sky. Uh, these are artificial satellites. This one is called Hope One and we have another one here which is moving extremely slowly called Cosmos 2433 and of course if the ISS went by as well we'd be able to see that too but um, yeah that is just amazing isn't it? But anyway so let's uh, take a look at the stars. We have Alcade here 104 light years away and Mizur which is 78 light years away. It's a double star apparently according to that and right beside it is Alcor and then you have Alioth which I do believe is the Alliance homeworld and I think you need a permit which I don't have to go there so we won't be able to go there but it's a rotating variable star which will be very interesting to see. I wonder what that looks like and then we have Megrez, which is 80 light years, and Fad, 83. Merak, almost 80, so these are kind of close together. Uh, and then we have Dupe, which is 124 light years away. Now there's some other things on the uh, around the plough which I want to show you. So there's a pinwheel galaxy, uh, which is a kind of positioned in an equilateral triangle with the handle stars here. Then there's the Whirlpool Galaxy just here. So we should be able to see those in the game, I hope. Uh, and then we have here, this is a star, this is actually a double star uh, called Measure 40 or looking on the wiki is called, it's also called Winnick 4. So I'm just wondering what it was going to be called in Elite Dangerous. Um, and then we have this What's this? This is the Owl Nebula. And what you can do with the Stellarium is zoom in. Just line that up. The Owl Nebula. If you zoom in close enough, you have to get a proper image taken from a telescope here on Earth. And uh, that looks pretty smart. 
I'm sure that's a pretty good telescope though. Then there's one here called the Surfboard Galaxy. And guess what that looks like? It's just edge on practically that one. But the funny one I just spotted, and I never known this was here, was uh I've got to find it again now. Was it this one? Yeah, vacuum cleaner galaxy. <laughs> NGC three nine nine two. Let's see if we can see that. Oh that looks a beautiful galaxy. Vacuum cleaner galaxy. Well there you go. So let's take a look at the plow in Elite Dangerous and uh see what it looks like and see if we can pick out some of those some of those deep sky objects. Okay, so we've arrived in the solar system and as you can see there's Earth. In fact there's Europe. But look, Britain it's got fantastic weather. This must be a simulation, that can't be real. It's always raining in Britain. Okay, so I'm in Earth's shadow at the moment, looking up at the night sky. And as you can see, there is the plough in the middle of the screen. I don't think you can actually see any of the uh, deep sky objects. A bit difficult. I mean, really, from Earth, you would need a powerful telescope anyway. And using the pointer stars, we can look up and see Polaris. Okay, I just want to take a look at the uh, location in space uh, in the galaxy map, uh, where all these stars are. And as you can see, they're really quite close together. There's Merak. There's Fecta and Megrez, Alioth, Mizur and Alcor. And it's said that these stars originated from the same open star cluster some 300 million years ago. And that is why they're all cl quite close and co in the same plane as each other. Okay, so let's get going then. Friendship let's go and see our first starting. star, which is Alcade. So Alcade is a, an S-class star, nice big white star. The system has a population of 7 billion, which is the same as that we have on Earth at the moment. The system has two Earth-likes, and uh, impressively it has seven stars, two pairs of double stars. But the thing is, they're too spread out to be you know, that impressive, and you can only scoop from the main Alcade star. There's plenty of planets, uh, 18 and 8 of them are landable and there are plenty of star ports and planet ports to land on. Uh, unfortunately there's no planets of rings and that means that there are no resource extraction sites. Four, okay, on to three, our next system which two, is Mizur. In real life Mizur is actually a quadruple system and in fact in Elite it also is a quadruple system with three S-class stars and an M-class, of course, all scoopable. The population of the entire system is 139 million, which isn't that much, it's about the same as Russia. And out of the 25 planets, 21 are landable, which is pretty good. But unfortunately, there are no planet ports and there's only one star port, but it's 163,000 light seconds away from the arrival point. Other than that, it's a pretty system to explore. Four, okay, three, on to our next system now, two, which is Alcor. One, now, Alcor is not actually part of the Plough constellation, but because it's so close to Mizu, being just a little bit more than one light year away, uh, I thought I'd put it in. And it's quite an impressive system as well. Population here is 682,000, which is half that of China. There are three stars here, and one of them is ringed. All of the inner planets closest to the star are actually all ringed which means there's lots of resource extraction sites to go and venture into and a couple of these ringed planets you can actually land on which gives you some really good visuals there are three star ports and one planet port and the closest station to the star is 1753 light seconds away and what with the resource extraction sites this is going to be a good system for bounty hunting I think Right, so our next system would be Alioth, but unfortunately I don't have the permit two, for that, so it's going to have to be Megrez. Megrez has five stars, and four of them are close together at the arrival point, which makes a very impressive entrance. The population here is two and a half billion. There's one Earth-like and plenty of star ports and planet ports to land on, but the closest star port is almost 28,000 light seconds away, so it's a bit of a trek. And while I was here, there were quite a few combat zones. Four, you know, some stars three, have many different two, names. 
and Fad is one of them, which is our next destination. But in Elite, it's called Fector, which is another Class S star. Total population here is around 10 million. There are 13 planets, of which four are landable, and there are four Earth-likes. And there's a few starports and only one planet port here. Closest starport is 5,800 light seconds away. Bit of a nondescript system, actually, with not much going on. Four, okay, so on to the three, pointer stars of the plow two, now. Uh, one, first one is okay. Mirak. And you get a nice two-star view at the entry point here. Uh, there are four stars in total in this system, all of them scoopable. Population of 186,000, and there are 20 out of 27 landable planets. There are a couple of planet ports and only one star port, which is 385,000 light seconds away. I can tell you I did not go to visit that one. Okay, Four, on to our last three, star in the plow two, now, and that is Dave. Engage. Upon arrival, you come across this massive G-Class star, which is actually 25 times larger than Sol, our own star, but uh, it has a similar mass. Population here is a measly 68,000, which is about the same size as a small town in the UK. Seven out of the eight planets are landable, but there's only one planet port and there's only two outposts here. The closest being 7,500 light seconds away from the arrival point. Okay, so that's the plow covered, or the Big Dipper, whatever you like to call it. Before I close, let's just take a look back at Earth and our own star, Sol, to see what that looks like. Looking quite pretty there in a little kind of cluster of uh, its neighbouring stars. So that's it for this episode of The Sky at Night with Elite Dangerous. I do hope you enjoyed. I've been planning on doing this for a while, uh, so please do let me know what you think. If you like it or not, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if you do have a favourite constellation that you would like me to investigate, then please do put it in the comments below. And of course, next time you're outside, don't forget to look up at the night sky and wonder which stars you visited. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Commander's Log, 19th of Jan, 3302. Today I'm going to be doing some research. I'm going to be getting a UA, an unknown artifact, and I'm going to take it to a different nebula. Now the reason for this is because the science boffins, they believe that the barnacles that we've recently discovered uh, only reside in nebula. Uh, and I'm kind of putting two and two together. Uh, since a UA points to a, uh, the system um, with